All right, guys, it's week eight. You guys wanted to hear about the leads manager and how they have a process of going through and calling back the leads within the setup. And basically we work out of one app right here, uh, property lead app, and that is created each time a new seller is called. So you can see here this number called in, it created a new item and the status comes in as new, date and time that it was created and basically what it looks like uh, as a new lead is created or new prospect is created. So as our leads manager comes into these, they're coming in and selecting uh, their name and putting themselves as the person that's working the lead. They'll go ahead and mark off that they're about to make the outbound one call and they're about to call out for more information. Now, if there was a voicemail, there would be a link here can see there's a voicemail link that they could click on and listen to because this was a missed voicemail. Uh, if it was a missed call, it would have sent out an automated text message from the local uh, call rail phone number directly back to the seller asking what the address was. And if it was created by a text message, you would see what the text message uh, content was from the seller over here in the comments as well as in the communication log. You can see we're tracking what the initial call type is actually right here. Um, and if it is a text, you receive an email with what that content is, missed call, you would receive a time and date, and obviously there's a task created. So as this um, leads manager is making a call on the first attempt outbound, we're going to assume that they did not make contact. And what ours is told to do is if the voicemail is uh, on the uh, seller's end, they're not going to leave a voice, voice message. So they would click this button right here we're tracking in the back end that uh, an outbound call was made, no message was left, and we're hoping that the curiosity will have the seller call back. Uh, they'll see the number, they'll call it back because no voicemail was left. Uh, at this point, they would put in a next contact date of tomorrow with the assumption that tomorrow they're gonna come into this lead. Uh, there's a view that they'll look at, they'll come in this lead tomorrow knowing that they need to work it. They'll do an outbound call number two, They'll make that call if they receive a voicemail and they're unable to make contact. At that point, they would leave a voicemail here. And at that point, uh, they're now going to go over and do a next contact date of the next date. If I'm to refresh this, you're gonna see here in a minute that the button will unclick and it does that every single time. Uh, so this does not remain clicked. Uh, we're tracking exactly how many outbound calls are made and what the outcome is of each. So I'm going to refresh the browser real quick and you'll notice that that button is going to be unhighlighted here in a minute. So you've got a voicemail that was received calling for more information. The first one we left no message and if I go back up and refresh one more time you can see that that button is unclicked at this point. I can come down and now it's telling us that we had outbound uh, voicemail left. So that was your second attempt that we made an outbound call. And now we're going to say that it's the third attempt. On third attempt, if we do not make contact, at that point we're both going to leave a voicemail and we're going to send a text message out to them. So the SMS colon and anything after that portion right there will be sent out from the local call rail phone number as a text message to the seller. Um, but at this point, after we've made the three attempts and not been able to get a hold of them, we would put it into our follow-up, and down below we would select uh, an automated text message campaign for the short term to try to get a hold of them, as well as the voicemail campaign, and let that uh, attempt to get a hold of them. Our process is after the third attempt, we're going to push this out for uh, 45 days roughly and make it a weekday and that'll be the next attempt that we actually make an outbound uh, live call trying to reach them uh, other than that now they're going to receive text and vo <coughs> voicemails so they'll receive text and voicemails uh, for the next basically 30 to 45 days they're going to receive roughly four or five of them on the short term trying to get a hold of them and if they respond back to the, any of the text messages that would come into here you'd receive a task that you need to respond to a text message. If they were to call back in, uh, you would receive a task that they've called in and the seller's already in here. So it's a seller called again, you've missed a call or you have a voicemail and again, you receive a task so that you know that you need to return that call. 
So that's really the process of the leads manager making the initial uh, three attempts outbound when they leave a voicemail message, when they leave a text message, and ultimately when they put it into follow-up. Now I really quickly want to show you what the um, next contact dates and some of the views that we have and how they're working that. When they first come in in the morning, they're going to go for the default view, and this is going to show them any of the leads that were created um, from last night and this morning. This is a test workspace, so you can see some of this data is not typically what you would see. You would see basically from here down, all of these probably would be in either add follow-up or calling for more information, dead or remove. You would not typically see any new leads down here because you would have already worked them. So from here on up, this would be basically last night and then in the very morning, new people that have called. Your people would see that they need to call these uh, five or six, and as they work through these and push it into calling for more information, either they're making contacts, sending appointments, or pushing them into dead or remove, or whatever the case may be, pushing it to the next attempt for tomorrow when they try again. Uh, after they've done that, our leads manager is coming down to the text message uh, view right here. If you had received any text messages that need to be uh, responded to, it would say text received and it would have a count. You would count or you would click on that and you could then respond to the ones that have sent in text messages since uh, the last night when they looked at it. And then third is they're going to come down to the next contact date uh, and look if they have any under the last 30 days. It's going to be basically today's date and then any with a past 30 days date. So if you missed any coming on a Monday and you might have missed one over the weekend, you would see the weekend's date and you could click on that and start working through it. Uh, but ideally, you're working through today's and then as today's pop up, you start working through any of your follow-ups and next contact dates uh, that would have showed up. Those are the ones that were clicking in the lead. So that's really what we're working through. Um, you know, she can work through each of these throughout the day, make 50 to 60 calls, uh, look at the text messages, and they're told the process is to look at text messages three times a day on that different uh, on that view up here, right here. Uh, they have a priority of returning today's leads first, uh, ideally in the five-minute window. Then they have uh, the voicemails if they've missed a call is the first priority. Text messages after that, and then missed calls and abandoned calls uh, are the third priority for them to call them back. If you got any other questions on kind of what we go through on the process of working through them, let me know. I'll leave the comments section open. Uh, you can email us at reiautomation at gmail.com or the website is reiautomationsquad.com as well. Let me know if you have any questions.